On November 9, 1945, Wang Yi opened the first Muda Kwan School in Yongsan, Seoul, Korea. This video is a depiction of the significant events that led to the formation of the Muda Kwan by the founder and the ensuing years of its growth, maturity, and continuing influence as an important modern era martial arts organization. It is also intended to highlight the significance of the event and the history which led us here. That it is worthy of recognizing for our own edification and for the education of others is noted by the massive display of support by Mudak Kwan members worldwide, by Mudak Kwan alumni, and their own students that make up the Mudak Kwan heritage for future generations. In 1921, at the Don O Festival held in May, an incident occurred that would forever change the life of a youthful attendee. A man was observed defending himself against eight attackers, using his feet and hands in a most interesting and effective manner. Intrigued, the youth, named Wang Yi, watched as the man evaded attacks and countered with sophisticated kicking techniques. Inspired by what he saw, the seven-year-old then dedicated himself to becoming a martial artist. Some 15 years later, Wang Yi, already considered an accomplished martial artist, being primarily self-taught, while working in Manchu, Manchuria, met and was accepted as a student by Master Yang Kuk Jin. This marked the beginning and early formal training of Wang Yi and the disciplines of Sebop, Bobop, and Rionbop, as well as Dom Tua Sip I Ro and Tai Kuk Kwan all contributed to his expanding knowledge of martial artistry and the basis for what would be established as the Muda Kwan. A difficult period of history for Korean people, before the ending of World War II and liberation to an independent country, the nine years of training under Master Yang were extremely important to Wang Yi, establishing a firm foundation in the philosophy and techniques he practiced. At the close of the war in 1945, National independence encouraged him to organize his own martial arts organization for the purpose of furthering the knowledge and benefits that he sincerely believed in. This began, from very humble beginnings, what would become the largest martial arts organization in Korea by the early 1960s. That Muda Kwan First Dojong was opened on November 9, 1945. It is at this 75th gathering anniversary that we, his students, mark the occasion and commemorate the day. The period of time immediately after the founding of this first Muduk Kwan school showed a period of rigorous training focusing on positive attributes of human development. The training curriculum in these early days consisted of Hyung, Sam Su Shik, Ju De Ryun, and Kyuk Pa. Students trained in simple, trimless uniforms. By 1949, four students were issued the first Muda Kwan Don Bonds. A prolific scholar, Wang Gi also penned his first modern Korean martial art textbook, the Wasu Do Kyo Bon. He would continue to author a new publication every 10 years for the next five decades. The Korean War brought another period of hardship for the Korean people and for the Muda Kwan Wang Gi founded. During this time, he continued to teach and lead his organization in Pusan under extreme conditions. Poorly clad students practiced the art they had grown so proud of, despite the hardships of war all around them. Nearly one million deaths, a country permanently divided into two, and three years of the ravishes of war covered the Korean Peninsula. With the truce in 1953, some semblance of a return to a former life began to emerge. Wang Yi, despite having personally experienced extreme hardship during this war, renewed with a vigor his efforts to promote the art and his Muda Kwan organization. A startling list of achievements ensued from 1954 until 1961. A prime period of growth that was termed the Golden Age of the Muda Kwan established the organization as the most influential martial arts school during this time. Contributing factors to this success include the discovery of the existence of the Mu Yi Dobo Tang Gi, 
the oldest manuscript of its kind in the Seoul University Library. This provided an important historical context for the practice of indigenous Korean martial arts dating back many centuries. This also provided Wang Yi with the basis for adopting and aligning his own system and organization with the historical art of Su Bok. In 1957, uh, he saw the Muye Dobo Tongji for the first time and found the Su Bak name. Uh, that was about 12 years after the Mudokkan's founding. Uh, he was very happy and studied the Kwonpop section of the Muye Dobo Tongji and introduced the Korean historic art Su Bak by forming the Korean Subakto Association in 1960s. Because it was only four years after the war, no one was interested in history and cultural aspect of the life. I think he felt an importance of history in the Mudo culture. So he officially named the history Subakto in 1960. Embracing the tradition of ancient martial artists in Korea, Wang Gi adopted the use of trim on the dobok, signifying belt rank and recognizing the traditional apparel used by Korean martial artists in the Kukuro dynasty. The trim the mudokwan dobok started in 1954 uh, in order to connect with the traditional custom of the Goguryeo dynasty. It's about 2,500 years ago. So 1954, it also the year I start the, at the training at the Mudokwan. So my experience in the young, uh, when I was nine or 10 years old, I was very proud to wear the trimmed tobo along with the group wearing the Mudokwan tobo with high standard. Uh, we were very uh, easily identified as Mudokwan practitioners because of the trimmed tobo. I believe this helped to increase the visibility of the Mudokwan at that time. The Mudokwan, the prime growth, ends in 1961 as a new military government dictatorship had begun. Now we begin to lose the space to maintain the Mudokwan identity. Now during this difficult time in 1965, for the first time, I saw the picture of trimmed Dobok practitioners are showing and recognized in the Black Bear magazines. I was very happy and motivated to see the Mudokwan is alive and kicking outside of Korea. It gave us a sense of hope and then the dreams. As the technical foundation grew, Wang Yi strengthened it with a philosophical focus that taught the importance of adding scholarly attributes to the Mudo practitioner curriculum. The founder used to say, scholarship begins with a study and ends in theory. And the Mudo begins with action and ends in theory. Uh, his action in his life was a demonstration of the Mudo philosophy he called action philosophy. He also emphasized on importance in scholarly as a mood of practitioner. And he published a book every 10 years to support his emphasis. His foresight imbued with discipline and respect, he continued to promote and establish the Donban system as a system of recognizing achievement and seniority within the Muda Kwan. Uh, as discussed earlier, Tambon is a great culture to uphold the Mudo order, which reflects the discipline and respect. And discipline and respect are planted in the Mudo Kwan culture through the Tambon system. This sincere combination of philosophy and technical expertise continued through his teaching of the use of the huri, the philosophy of line, speed, and beauty, and his establishment of the five mudo values, indicated by history, tradition, philosophy, 
discipline and respect, and technique. He emphasized on physics and science to base the Mudokan techniques by applying to use of our hip. It became a foundation of the technique in the Mudokan. And we are very grateful to him for the Mudokan culture and the lessons in five Mudo values, as well as a heritage for us. He also provided a clear direction for us to focus toward the proper Mudo path. By the new decade, the founder incorporated the Korean Subak Do Association in 1960 for the purpose of supporting the growth of the Muda Kwan legally through official recognition by the Korean government. It was at this time being taught in every branch of the military and in the police academies. This period also witnessed the joining of other countries and martial arts through his direct organization into single events for demonstration, competition, and celebration purposes. Because of his view of the Mudo, it's not about fighting or punching or kicking. It's about history, tradition, philosophy, discipline, respect, and techniques. Because of that, many of the good things were happened in 1960, such as uh, international human relations. So among the China, Japan, Philippines, USA, and Korea, we had a meeting as a goodwill demonstration or competition. You know, this was really for the first time in that scale in Korea. And also, uh, the Mudokan curriculum been taught in the Naval Academy, Air Force Academy, and Police Academy, all the young elite institute taking the value for the Mudokan training. And also all the members, they are, wherever they go, they carry the Mudokan patch and Mudokan flag to showing their pride. It was a direct result from the Bob five Mudo value in and our action under the founder's leadership. And it has surely helped to build a foundation for future abroad establishment later on. Political upheaval brought a time of uncertainty to the Muda Kwan in 1961. Suppression of Muda Kwan activities, national adoption of the Taekwondo martial art, and the forced acceptance of a nationally sponsored art versus the civilian run Muda Kwan all led to the final enactment of the government to cancel the Korean Subak Do Association in 1965. The Muda Kwan went through the another extreme hardship as the military government dictated in 1961. They had canceled registration of the Korean Subakto Association Mudokwan without any good reason. It was a very difficult time for, for, for founder personally, but he decided to defend his right at the court. He went to high court after long battle, he won the case. The government, they reappear to the Supreme Court. So that the long battle in the Supreme Court, the founder won again. So we are able to say the Subakto, the Mudokan, through this the, uh, legally. It was a very difficult time for the founder. I remember, you know, my family lived at the Yongsan, Seoul, the whole family get together those period, wished the positive judgment from the court. That's one of the few times really I prayed, you know, for that uh, the decisions. I was seniors in high school at that time. I'm very grateful. We still enjoy the Subak the Mudokwan because from his combat by the founder. What followed and continued into the next decade was the emigration of Subak Do, Mudok Kwan instructors to various parts of the world, caused by challenging constraints imposed in the homeland. The Mudok Kwan identity in Korea was forcefully extinguished, 
encouraging a new period of global focus. A resurgence in interest brought on a flourishing of new Mudok Kwan activity in many countries. A strong identity and reputation of the Mudok Kwan was again established and continued throughout the 1980s and 90s. In 2002, the founder of the Muda Kwan, Wang Yi, passed away on July 14. His successor, H.C. Wang, was named, and his immediate work focused on the mission to strengthen the Muda Kwan Foundation for future generations. Uh, we lost a great leader. Uh, his leadership helped us to connect with the Muda values. And he also, he showed he was a visionary in many, uh, through many incidents. One of the things is the, if you see the cover picture of the Subak the Degam that was published in 1960s, you will see the Idan Yopodo uh, Chagi on the moon. So he had the vision at that time, the Mudokwan will practice in the moon. So his visions are still in our hand and the future generation. At this 75th commemoration of the founding of the Mudok Kwan, we reflect back on many things worth noting. That we are all a part of this history, rich with storied examples of how each individual who has contributed to its betterment has in turn become an important part of its foundation. That the thousands of lives that make up the legacy of the Founders' work continue, despite the many hardships and difficulties imposed by political situations, war and conflict, and have emerged to be the visible evidence of the virtue that resides at the core of this organization's center. That the commonality that we share, the one constant linkage to the Founder, is one in which we have great pride and accept as our responsibility. The notion that the Muda Kwan is worth preserving for our time and future generations. He provided the visions we try to implement in our time and next generation will take over. We are here to celebrating 75th anniversary. So your participation is helping to implement his vision. The founder left us with a heritage for us to enjoy, practice, preserve, and strengthen. We feel very fortunate to have such a heritage. Kwan Jiang Nim, 감사합니다. <laughs>